Hello, dears, and welcome to Al-Husseini Virtual Lab, Pathology Talks, Tips and Practical Tips. What I'm going to be sharing with you today is a nice example of a tubal high-grade serous carcinoma. So this is a case of a 73-year-old female patient who presented with abdominal pain and distension and was found to have complex right pelvic mass. So hysterectomy and bilateral salpingo-oophorectomy was uh, performed. Now, this, is, this section is actually from the right fallopian tube. And if we look here, this is the usual normal lining of the fallopian tube, which contrasts beautifully with the areas here, with the lining here, where we have on high power magnification, stratification, hyperchromasia, loss of polarity. And again, here, another focus where we have rounding of the nuclei, prominent nucleoli, stratification with loss of uh, polarity, importantly, very important tip is that complete absence of cilia on the surface epithelium. This is extremely important whenever we think about reactive conditions in the fallopian tube versus neoplastic conditions in the fallopian tube. And this is yet another focus with high power magnification showing the stratification of the nuclei. These are the inter calculated cells, and then we have the prominent nucleoli. We have total loss of cilia. These are secretions. This is not cilia. Extremely important small tip that really helps you to sort out your cases between benign and malignant. Now, this is the P53, which was performed on the fallopian tube and easily contrasting the normal mosaic pattern of staining that we see in the wild type P53. Uh, 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 cells uh, versus the neoplastic cells where we have the strong diffuse positivity of 75% or more of a tumor cell in nuclei or of the dysplastic in nuclei. And actually here, it is beautifully highlighting the stratification of the nuclei. The contrast is so clear that this is the mutant or apparent pattern of expression and this is the wild pattern of expression. But without the presence of CHI-67, we cannot render a strict or a confident diagnosis of intraepithelial carcinoma. So this is the CHI-67, again, in the same focus, showing positivity in the nuclei of the dysplastic tumor cells, and it has to exceed 10% of the nuclei that are present. So we have to see the morphology. We have to have the P53 apparent staining pattern in addition to increase CHI-67 in order to render a diagnosis of serous intra, uh, uh, tubal intraepithelial carcinoma or stick. But in addition, in this fallopian tube, in other sections, there was evidence of invasive carcinoma that again was positive with P53. As you can see here, this is the surface epithelium and this is the invasive component. And of course, showing the elevated CHI-67, all in support of fallopian tube high-grade serous carcinoma that has originated from the surface epithelial changes in the form of the serous intra tubal intraepithelial carcinoma. So regardless of whether there was ovarian involvement or not, and in this case, there was evidence of ovarian serous carcinoma, the origin of the tumor is considered to be the fallopian tube. Now moving to the left fallopian tube, and as you can see here, there is some stratification, hyperchromasia that is seen from the low power magnification in contrast to the normal finding. And this is just zooming in into the higher power magnification. Now, as you can see here, there is a clear stratification of the nuclei, nuclei with irregularity. This is in contrast only to the single layer epithelium that is seen here with no evidence of the stratification. Now, P53 again showed this apparent staining pattern that we usually see 
with the, uh, the abnormal staining pattern that we usually see with carcinoma, this is in contrast to the normal or mosaic staining pattern that we see in the wild type non-mutant uh, epithelium. But in the left fallopian tube, the CHI-67 was so low, less than 10%, definitely is almost 1%. Now, the presence of the abnormal morphology in the presence of the apparent P53 uh, signature or a mutation or expression pattern, but in the presence of a low CHI-67 would really render the diagnosis of serous tuber intraepithelial lesion rather than carcinoma. Now, remember, in order to, uh, to reach into this diagnosis, you have to submit the fallopian tubes according to the CFIM or sectioning and extensively examining the fembriated end of the fallopian tube where you really dissect the fembriated end and then bread loaf the, all the fembria and uh, submit it in total. And then in uh, uh, around 20 millimeter apart sections are taken from the entire fallopian tube in order to be able to detect even a small foci of a stick or a still. Now, once we have evidence in the form of a stick involvement of the fallopian tube or in mucosal uh, uh, high-grade uh, serous carcinoma, as is present in this case, or part or the entire length of the fallopian tube is inseparable from the tube ovarian mass, the origin of the tumor should be assigned as the fallopian tube rather than ovarian or peritone or a tube ovarian. So the final diagnosis in this case, in this case is right tubal high-grade serous carcinoma arising from serous tubal intraepithelial carcinoma. This is in the right side, while the left side, the left lobian tube, shows only still or serous tubal intraepithelial lesion. Remember that you have to see evidence of morphology in the form of stratification, loss of polarity, sometimes okay regional mitotic figures in the absence of surface cilia. This is coupled with staining for P53, would, which would show the apparent staining pattern either in the form of the high expression, as in this case, or sometimes in the form of the complete negative or the null expression pattern. It has to be also interpreted in interpreted in the view of the CHI-67, meaning that if the CHI-67 uh, is positive or increased in uh, uh, expressed in 10% or more of the nuclei, this is supportive of, of a stick. While if we only see the morphology as well as the P53 apparent expression, but the CHI-67 is low in the same foci, this is considered to be still. I hope you find uh, this tip useful in your daily practice. Thank you.